let's talk. I, I told you yesterday we'd get through uh, the entire rest of this section. Let's just go ahead. Uh, we'll just knock out uh, half of the rest of the section. Uh, and I'll give you some time to uh, start the assignment, work on it. Uh, there'll be a couple questions that you can't do because of the rest of the, assi- the, rest of the notes, but um, let's talk about the, what we call the side angle side similarity. Okay, and I think this is, this is actually, in my opinion, the harder of the three similarity statements to, to deal with. Um, obviously, the structure or order of the letters there tell you how you have to see them in your um, image, in your particular problem. But basically, what it says is that the two sides that are um, wrapped around the angle, those sides have to be proportional to one another. And the angle has to be congruent to another angle in a second triangle. Okay? So the side, when we see side angle side, um, it says if an angle of one triangle is congruent to an angle of another triangle, and then the sides that include those angles are in proportion to one another, then the triangles are similar. Okay? And you see then down there at the bottom that it gives the, the ratio that you need, so the PQ over ST and the QR over SU. Okay? Um, that's showing you the sides that wrap around the angle, uh, and they need to be in the same ratio to one another. Okay, uh, and you see here I gave like uh, like when I say PQ, I gave that as a value of A. And ST uh, a value of AX, and then I gave QR, C, and SU. CX. And if you reduce those, you take an A out of both of these, it gives you 1 over X. And you take a C out of these, it gives you 1 over X. Okay, so that ratio is the same. Um, and what that's basically going to do is say, uh, when I compare the triangles, they're in like a 1 to 2 relationship, or a 1 to 3, or a 1 to 4, um, or a 2 to 3, 2 to 4, 2 to 5, whatever. Okay? Um, you guys, we, we've heard the word scale factor before, right? Okay? When we look at these ratios, these proportions, that is ultimately the scale factor. So when we talk about dilations, if you guys remember dilating things back in like seventh and eighth grade, and we'll do it again in chapter nine. Um, but the dilation factor says, you know, take this image and enlarge it by a factor of three. Well, that factor of three is the proportion that we're seeing with our side, side lengths right here. Okay, so there's a, there's a link there. Um, so similarity and dilations tied together. Okay? They're, the, they're all you think about. It, they're really the same thing. Um, but that's the side angle side similarity. Okay. Um, now we have to be able to decipher which sides to compare to which sides when we're doing this. Okay. If they're going to be in proportion, and they give me two sides. So let's go down here and look at. Um, that one there. Basically because they give me, well, let's pull, I think it would be easier if we redraw all this and, and um, decipher it that way. Uh, if I go, so does everybody see, it's kind of hard to see with this picture for some reason, got the lines did not embolden. So there we go. We see we've got this angle right here, angle S, correct? Okay, would you guys agree that angle S is in this top triangle? Okay, is angle S also part of this bigger triangle? Okay, so we've got essentially the reflexive property here saying that angle S is congruent to itself. It's a component or it's an angle that is in both triangles, okay? Now, yesterday we did a problem where we knew that PQ was parallel to RT. And that allowed us to show corresponding angles were congruent and we could use angle-angle similarity. Now PQ and RT don't have any notation in them to tell us that they're parallel, okay? So we do not know that PQ and RT are parallel even though it might look like they are, okay? So now we have to go off the side length. So let's pull these two triangles apart. So we got SPQ And this is four, and that's five. 
And then we've got the bigger triangle. Not very. There we go. Well, this is S up here still. This is now R. And that's T. Okay. Where now what would be the length of S to R? 16. Good. Okay. So we have 16 here. And what is S to T then? 20. Okay. Now. There's always question about um, how we have to compare four to the other triangle. So the four for SP, do I compare that to 16 or do I compare it to 20? Do I compare five to 16 or compare five to 20? Does that kind of make sense? What you need to realize is that it's that dilation idea is if, if I take a image that is, let's say, we have that triangle right there, and I'm just going to ask it for all of its distances. Oh, I'm going to do it this way. You can tell me what is the smallest side, right? You can tell me what's the largest side, correct? Okay. Now, if I only know, let's say, two of them, so let's delete that one, you can tell me which one's larger, which one's smaller, right? If I'm going to dilate that, so when I dilate it, it creates a similar It creates a similar shape. So I'm going to dilate it by a factor right now of 1.5. Okay? And if I dilate it by a factor of 1.5, this segment here, which was bigger than this one, right? Okay, so... The blue segment... is bigger than the red segment. So when I dilate by 1.5, my scale factor, which is also, so that's 3 over 2, which would be the ratio that I get when I compare proportional sides to one another. If that's the bigger side, when I dilate it, does it make sense that this has to be the bigger side in the dilated image? That makes sense? So I don't, I'm not sure what these two values are for these two segment lengths, okay? But I know this one's going to be bigger. So when I compare, it's got to be that one to that one, the bigger one to the bigger one, okay? Um, because if this one was bigger here, and then in the enlarged image, they reverse roll, so this one became smaller, what would happen is that this image would be distorted, and it would no longer be a dilation uh, of this one, okay? So what I'm trying to get at there is when you're comparing these, if you can find the smallest one, in this figure here, the only way that you're going to be able to determine if things are similar is that if you compare it to the smallest one that you know down here. Does that make sense? So when I see 4, what should I compare that to? 16. And I see 5, what should I compare that to? 20. And then when I cross multiply, what's 4 times 20? 80. And what's 16 times 5? 80. Are those proportional? Okay, so they are proportional, so we do have this side here proportional to that side, and then this side here proportional to that side, with the angle S in between being congruent. Does that make sense? Okay. What is 4 to 16 reduced by, or reduced to? One fourth. So what if I told you that this angle, or not angle, uh, segment right here was 3? Could you tell me what that distance right there is? It'd be 12, okay? You got that one to four relationship, right? Okay. Um, so that's just something to, to think about as we start using side angle side. And even on Monday when we start talking about side, 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 the same relationship is going to be utilized 
because we'll compare side 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 will be small side compared to small side large side to large side middle to middle and if they're all proportional uh, then we can guarantee that we have similarity but what what happens there is we have side angle side similarity then what could you tell me about if if we've said that these two angles or sorry these two triangles are similar what can you now tell me about that angle there compared to that angle there they're congruent Okay, and you can then tell me the same thing about that angle and that angle, right? So you're able to show me, so the conclusions are, okay, because we had side angle side. Okay, so the conclusions are that the remaining two angles that we did not talk about would end up being congruent. And the remaining side that we did not talk about, the remaining pair of sides that we did not talk about, would end up being proportional. And that's the conclusion, that's the byproduct uh, it's kind of like we talked yesterday. It's kind of like the CPCTC of similarity. Um, so you may have questions on side angle side. I want to jump down and do this one of these questions here it doesn't matter which one we do let's do this one so you got kind of a visual here um, we've talked about indirect measurement before indirect measurement being uh, the ability to measure something without physically touching it okay um, and for whatever reason or maybe you can't physically touch it okay um, this situation, I know it, it kind of looks kind of, a, kind of a bad picture up on the screen. Uh, but basically what we have here is this individual is interested in um, figuring out the height of this cliff. Okay? And you can do this uh, with the height of anything. Okay? Um, just kind of the scenario that, is, that they explain here. Um, says, before rock climbing, says Darius wants to know how high... Uh, he will have to climb, okay? So he places a mirror on the ground and walks backward until he can see the top of the cliff in the mirror, okay? And basically what that does is it sets up two triangles that are going to be similar, okay? Think about, you guys ever played pool? Okay, so if I'm playing pool or even basketball or whatever, Tennis, if I take, so if this is my pool table, okay, and I take a ball, okay, and I'm going to hit it off the rail. So let's say the ball comes and hits the rail right there, okay. Oh, that sucks. It's right there. Do you know how it's going to react when it bounces off the rail? So it's, it's going to come back this way, right? Okay. Is it going to come straight back that way? Like, what if I call this um, angle A? What is the angle it's going to bounce off at? That angle is going to be the same. Okay. You guys ever heard of, and like you've probably heard it in science, the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Okay. Um, that's what we're talking about here. If I take, if I take a bounce on a basketball and I bounce past it to somebody, the angle that it hits the ground is going to be exactly the same as the angle that it leaves the ground. Okay. Um, now, when we incorporate things like friction and that kind of stuff, there's there's a there's an amount of friction that might change that a little bit. Uh, but if we were in like a vacuum, that would that would happen. Okay. Um, light travels the same way through space. Okay. So the, you're seeing um, like on the back of um, like semis that, ha that has a message that says, you can't see my mirrors, I can't see you, okay? That's, that's the idea that we're, we're getting here, okay? Um, because of the way light bounces off reflective surfaces, okay, and how it travels. So what's going on here is that this guy, he puts his mirror down, okay? Maybe he starts with his back up against that cliff, so he starts right here, 
and he just walks out a certain distance. And it doesn't matter. He, it, here it says 34 feet. He could have walked out 80 feet, 15 feet, whatever. Okay? Um, but he walked out 34 feet, and he set down his mirror. Okay? That, that distance doesn't really matter. Okay? Um, usually if you're doing that, the, the, you would probably maybe want to use a distance that you were confident in being, um, you know, maybe exactly 34 feet, or you have an ability to measure that distance at least. Okay? Puts it down. Faces the mirror faces the cliff, and starts walking backwards, okay? And as he's walking backwards, okay, um, he's looking at that mirror, and the moment that he can see in that mirror, the top of the cliff, he stops. So that's kind of the setup we got here right now, and I know it's kind of hard to see, so I'm going to draw it over here. So we got the cliff that we're trying to figure out the height of, Okay. The mirror is right there, and he's at 34 feet. Uh, the mirror is 34 feet from the base of the cliff. As he's walking backwards, uh, he stops after six feet. And he knows that he is five and a half feet tall. Because that's where his eye, at least his eyes are five and a half feet off the ground. Does that make sense? Okay. So because of the way light travels, photons travel through space, uh, this physics allows us to create, in this case, in, in my picture, maybe not uh, all that to scale, but this angle right here and that angle right there, because of the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection, those should be the same thing. Okay? We're assuming that this guy uh, is perpendicular to the ground, and we're assuming that the cliff is perpendicular to the ground. Okay. And even if the cliff wasn't perf perpendicular to the ground, so maybe the cliff came back like this, right? But I can still take from that height right there and go straight down to maybe like right there. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, regardless, we now have two triangles that have what kind of similarity? Two angles. You got angle-angle similarity here. Okay. So then if it's angle-angle similarity... Uh, let's just call this point A, let's call that point B, C, and D. We could say that triangle B, A, M is similar to triangle uh, D, C, M. And then we could say that the guy's height, B, A, should correspond to the height of the cliff, which is D, C. And then A, M, which is the distance that the man is away from the mirror, should correspond to the distance that the mirror is away from the cliff. And if we now have those four pieces of data, or at least three pieces of data in the unknown DC, we should be able to find out how tall that cliff is. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. Um, something that we use in proportions a lot is, let's say... Um, I think I, we've picked on Jagger before with this uh, beginning of the year um, with Rob in a convenience store, right? We talked about that, didn't we? Let's say that um, Jagger, going back to him, I think we were talking about proofs. Like I used him as an example of uh, you know, setting up a good alibi for somebody um, as a lawyer uh, to uh, prove, his, or, or prove his guilt or uh, confirm his innocence. Let's say that he's robbing this convenience store, has a mask on, doesn't talk, left no prints, nothing like that. Um, but the convenience store had security cameras, okay? And we're able to see this individual okay? That's the person that robbed the convenience store. Very good picture. Um, and we want to basically narrow our if, if I just see a person on TV, do you know how tall they are? Yeah. You guys ever watch movies with Tom Cruise in it? Yeah. You know how tall Tom Cruise is? Like yeah, he's really tiny, but you would not know that from the video, right? Uh, if I watch, uh, you guys ever, Chuck, Chuck Norris? Yeah. You know who Chuck Norris is? Yeah. Chuck Norris is like 5'5". Five, five. Like he's tiny, yeah. okay? But you don't know that, okay? If I'm looking at a video, it's hard to tell size, right? Okay. So I don't know, looking at the security cameras, that I can narrow down my population to that this person's maybe between 6'1 
and six three or five eight and six foot, whatever. Okay, but over here. There's a Pepsi machine, right? Okay. Do I know the specifications of that Pepsi machine? No. Huh? But do I, do, do, can I go to Pepsi? Can I go to that convenience store? And can I look at the model number or whatever and know exactly how tall that Pepsi machine is? Yes. Okay. So I might be able to say, okay, in real life, Real life, that Pepsi machine, let's say it's um, 78 inches tall, okay? But on the camera, maybe it's 2.5 centimeters tall. Does that make sense? And on the camera, I can't tell how tall this person is, but if I can tell this person is 1.75 centimeters tall on camera, then can I use these three pieces of information to determine how tall this person is in real life? Okay. So you guys have heard of like forensic sciences, right? Okay. That would be a, like an aspect of um, like forensic analysis for like criminal, criminal investigations. Okay. Um, but it uses the math and the ratios that we're talking about right now. All right. Um, does that kind of make sense? Does anybody have questions on anything right now in regards to similarity? The, so the quiz the other day that you took, um, my plan with that 